Hey, welcome to Ask Katrina. The question today is, Katrina, how do I create the proper professional distance between me and my direct reports or my peers or even senior leadership above me? How do I do that? As always, a great question. So the answer is this. First, let's define what professional distance actually is. Because when I hear that term professional distance, I'm like, mm, kind of sounds like we don't want to let people into our world. Okay. And, and if that's the case and you actually want to keep that distance in that space, I understand that. I used to keep distance a lot as I was moving through my career. And the reason was not because I didn't like people or I didn't want to make relationships or friendships. It was because I had a lot of imposter syndrome, like a lot of you probably. You have imposter syndrome. And, and I used to wake up in the morning saying, dear God, please do not let today be the day that they figure out I'm not as good as they think I am. I literally would say that in my head. And so because I was worried about people seeing through what I felt I didn't know or couldn't do, which was not true, it was all made up in my head, but that's where I came from. That was the position that I came from. And so because of that, I kept people away, right? Because I, I kept some distance. I, I kept them at arm's length. And I was still obviously very professional and I carried myself appropriately, but I didn't talk a lot about my personal life and I didn't let people in. And there's a difference between that level of distance versus a level of appropriate professionalism where you build rapport and you build trust and you build relationships, but you're not sharing everything that has happened in your life, right? We all know people that we have worked with that will share every part of everything that has ever happened to them and, and there's no filter. And while you can appreciate the fact that there's no filter because they're just being honest, what I don't think they understand, what you obviously know as well that, that they probably don't understand, is that they're damaging their brand and they're not using very good judgment in sharing it all because we all make mistakes and we're all human. And there is a time and a place to acknowledge our humanity, but there's also a time and a place where we have to garner respect and drive the business forward, right? Through our ability to influence and communicate and have proper relationships. And if all we're doing is talking about our failures and our missteps and how we're not where we need to be, and we're joking about you know, what we did over the weekend, we're going to lose some trust, right? We're going to lose some of that just naturally. So there's a difference, again, between professional distance because of fear and having professional distance because you just don't need to share everything because that could be damaging to the relationships that you're actually building. The first one doesn't encourage relationships. It just protects you and insulates you. The second situation 100% encourages relationships, 100% encourages transparency. And yes, you'll talk about failures when it comes to business or career steps or whatever, because that makes us human. And it allows your, your team and your peers and those around you to learn so they don't make the same mistakes. It's all normal. Okay. But we're not sharing the personal human side of everything that's happened to us in our lives. We'll share the professional human side. In this instance, with that distance, we're not sharing anything. We're just keeping people away because we're fearful they can already see the failure coming. All right. So that's the answer. We've got to understand the difference. And you've got to understand which one you want. I would tell you that you don't want this first one. You do not want that professional wall up, distance, no rapport. Because people aren't going to follow you, right? And you're not going to be able to influence. And as an executive, relationships are the key commodity that you deal in, okay? That's how it works. You've got to focus on having that second level of that professional distance where you, you have rapport, you have engagement but you don't share every personal aspect of your entire life, right? You know where to draw the line. You know what to share and what not to share, but you are sharing, right? So that people can understand how to connect with you. That is the second level. That second piece, that second pathway is exactly where you want to be. And the way that you create a boundary and you create that distance is you decide, is this something that if I heard it from a peer, if I heard it from um, a direct report, if I heard these things come out of their mouths, would it influence my trust 
right? My level of trust that I have in them. Would it change the way that I view them? Would it damage their their professional brand or their executive brand in your instance, in my mind? I would be asking myself that question, right? And so what I used to typically come up with would be safe things that I felt very comfortable talking about and sharing and things that I wouldn't. And I would share, you know, how my my kids, you know, sporting events or musical whatever's were happening. And I would talk about those things, but I wouldn't talk about date night or fights or relationship issues or anything personal to that level, right? I drew a line. I knew what was comfortable and that I would share and what I wouldn't. And again, that's distance, but it's appropriate distance while still allowing them to have a glimpse into my life and know me and connect with me as a human. That's the balance you want to create. And that's how you answer that question.